Hello and welcome to another Tea and Trinket video. My name is Katie and today we're going to be talking about more works in progress. Before I get started, for those who are wondering, I am wearing a sweater that I made myself. I'm not sure if I've shown this on a previous video before, but this is the Silver Forest sweater by Jennifer Steingast. Again, today we're going to be showing more works in progress. This may end up being a video that is shot in multiple parts because it turns out that getting my works in progress organized enough to film is a little more complicated. Everything's more complicated than I expect it to be. Let's get started so that I can show you the first batch that I have on the tray to my left. This is a market bag, so I kind of have the ball of yarn inside the market bag. It is one of those stretchy net bags. Uh, if I can figure out how to, I will put the name of the pattern and the designer on screen. If not, I'll have all the information below in the video description. And before I get too far, I am sorry that I was not able to put the link in the previous video up in the cards. They're called cards, apparently, guys, just so you know. Uh, you cannot have external links in the cards unless you are a YouTube partner, which I did not know. Now I know for the future. Anyways, back to what I was talking about. This peachy color is a bamboo cotton blend, I believe. It's either bamboo cotton or it is some sort of synthetic combined with bamboo or combined with cotton. I have another ball of this yarn in a very cute minty green-ish color that I'm going to make a second one out of, so I will have two. I have the wound up remains of a tea cozy that I had started. It's the cinnamon brioche pattern. I don't remember the designer's name. Again, if I can pop it on screen, I will do so. If I cannot figure out how to do that yet, I will put it in the description down below. I might do both. I have these two lovely colors of Malabrigo Rios, and I can't remember the name of the colors. I will put that information up as well. Hopefully the description for this video isn't eight pages long. It very well might be. I have a lot of works in progress and I'm trying to speed things up so that we can get to all of them. Pair of socks for my boyfriend. I'm kind of just making up the pattern as I go uh, based on what has worked well for him in the past for fitting his feet. And I'm going to cut in a heel and do an afterthought heel after the thought. Is that why it's called that? Yes, yes, that's why it's called that. Anyways, <laughs> this is just a sock. The toe is worked in Barocco Comfy socks, I believe, in the red colorway. Shocker, it, it's called red, which is 100% synthetic. The rest of the sock is in this bright rainbowy colored wool and silk blend. It is Mountain Colors Twizzlefoot. I don't remember the colorway for this one either. We're very prepared today, but I figured it would be better to get through these quickly than it would be to get through them accurately. Again, as I said in my previous video, it's more the comedic value of how many there are. Working on sock one, another sock in this cute little bag that I made myself, this one. And I have the first one done. I was making the pattern myself when I first made this, which means that I will likely have to go up a needle size to a size two in order to match gauge because I was working with a size two needle when I started this. I typically work on a US 1.5 knitting needle for socks, which is two and a half millimeters, whereas the size two is 2.75 millimeters, I believe. But I'm making this sock. It is in the Lorna's Laces. It has Outlast in it along with the wool. And Outlast is a material developed by NASA for spacesuits to help keep them from getting too warm or too cold. It will regulate 
the temperature. That's why I got this and I thought it would be really cool to have space socks. Because it's really cool to have space socks. Agree with me. You should. This is the Blackberry colorway. I was gonna say Bramble, that was not right. This is the Blackberry colorway. I have the first one finished, just gotta finish the second one, and then I can use the scraps for something else, probably. In another makeup bag, I have the Ephemeris hat by Hunter Hammerson. Aren't you impressed that I remembered all the information for that? Uh, I was really excited about this book that she was publishing, so I bought a physical copy of it. It's got these lovely stitches that just give it such a cool look, and it's a great way to use variegated yarns to show off the color more, which I really wanted to do for this color. This is Hedgehog Fibers Kimono on the uh, single ply sock base. This one's not very exciting to look at uh, at the moment. I have a very, very long, just length of knitwear. <laughs> not even knitwear yet. So this is how you start working on a project called Short Stays. It is a project from the first Jane Austen Knits magazine. I may be wrong, but it was from a Jane Austen Knits magazine. This is the Short Stays pattern. It's a worsted weight pattern. I am using Cascade 220 in the smoke colorway. That's 8408 is the color. I have plenty of these left to finish making the short stays. It's definitely an aesthetic short stays, not historically accurate and most certainly not the same functionality as a historical short stays. But it'll be cute and I'm going to enjoy wearing it. These well, this is the Skew Socks from Nitty, the Winter 2009 issue. What's really cool about these is that you knit them at an angle and then you kind of have to origami fold the heel up. Problem I'm running into is that I have a much deeper instep than the pattern creates. So I'm having to do quite a bit of math and research on this to get a sock that fits. You Socks by Lana Holden. And you can kind of see the little origami for the socks to make them fit. This is the Deja Vu color from Hedgehog Fibers in their Sporty Merino. This is a cowl that I had started working on. This is the Raindrops cowl, I want to say. I am making it striped because I didn't have very much left of either of the yarns. Well, no, that's not true. I didn't have very much left of the lighter colored yarn and the dark colored one was a bit brighter than I had wanted the cowl to be. The lighter colored yarn is this, which is Malabrigo Machita in water green. And this is Debbie Bliss Rialto Sock. I don't recommend this for socks. It is a single ply, even if it does have barber polling. But making this, I'm not sure how much I like it, and I might pull it out and use the yarn for something else. This is the Skew Shawl by Stephen West. Is big. <laughs> so it's not very easy to see because it is bunched up on a needle and quite literally falling off the other side. It's kind of double-sided, but I like the other side more. And I was making this to kind of just use up a lot of worsted weight yarns that I had from other projects and didn't have enough to make anything else with. But this is one of the first brioche projects that I ever made. Literally these two yarns right here constitute the leftovers of my very first brioche project, which was a cowl. And so I think this was my second. This was definitely my first that involved increases and decreases in brioche. There was a while where I wasn't sure that I wanted to finish this, but now pulling it out again, I like it a lot more than I remember it. This will probably get pulled out and be something very warm and cozy for me to wear on the way back from snow trips 
once I can go on snow trips again, which won't be this season, unfortunately. This is the Mama Vertebrae cardigan. I made it shorter because I didn't have much yarn, but I did give it full sleeves that were shaped. I'm not sure if I like it. I might have to rip it out and make something else with the yarn because I just don't know. I didn't really have enough to make exactly what I wanted and I also ran out of yarn right at the end of the bind off. I don't know if I'm going to finish it. I don't know if I'm going to rip out the bind off and an additional row and then just bind it off again. I'm not sure yet. That is why it is still a works in progress. Here is a pair of what look like completed socks. There is a problem with them. Leg length matches up. Heel matches up. Foot mostly matches up. And then... One of the toes is too short. This one is a little bit snug. Um, I'm not sure if that's going to be problematic. The reason this happened is because I knit the second sock at a much tighter gauge because I was stressed out. I need to see if the second sock is both too short and too tight before I can figure out whether I need to start over completely or just rip out the toe and knit it a little bit longer. And these are the keel heel socks. Another sock. Uh, this is the Pixel Rise by Kemper Ray and I did a Toes by Terry toe. It's real cute. I was using Hedgehog Fibers Minis for it. It's just too tight. I need to now go back, rip this out, and uh, I'm probably just going to re-knit it inside out so that the floats are looser because as you can see this has a little bit of color work in it. It has strands of yarn that are between the stitches where those colors are located on the outside pattern, which if they're too tight cause the fabric to warp and pull in a little bit. But now I have more than just the mini skeins for this sock. I have a lot more Hedgehog Fibers full skeins that I have knit other projects with and have leftovers that can go into these. A glove that I have not finished. This glove is intended for a man with much bigger hands than mine, but this pattern at this gauge is not fitting me, therefore I know it won't fit him. So I need to rip this out and find a way to add a whole bunch of stitches. So this one's a little bit different. This is a hooded cowl that I am making using null binding. Now, null binding is a fabric created by Scandinavian peoples during the Viking era, but the fabric is made out of knots that are just kind of, the yarn is wrapped around so your fingers and so the wide flat needle in a way that creates a very stretchy fabric, but because this is a knotted fabric instead of a knitted fabric, with knitting you have a series of loops that are interconnected with one another and stack on top of each other. Because of how the knitted loops are formed, if you cut into it or it wears through, you get kind of like that run. If you've had a sock or a t-shirt that's gotten a hole in it, you'll notice that some of the stitches will just drop down and create these little ladders in between. That is because knitting is a series of stacked loops, whereas null binding is a series of stacked knots. Because the fabric is knotted instead of knitted, that means that it is very durable and really hard to wear out. Uh, if one stitch is worn through, that stitch is worn through. None of the ones around it are going to come undone because of that one stitch. So a very durable fabric that is also very stretchy. The main issue with null binding for me is that it takes a really long time and I'm not very good at it yet. It's taking a while. 
These ones make me kind of sad. I started a pair of socks for a friend of mine at a job that I had briefly. These were going to be socks for her to celebrate her promotion at that job. I did not finish the socks very quickly and then I forgot about them and uh, even worse I have not been in contact with her for several years now which makes me sad so it's been hard to be happy to work on these socks when I feel sadness. At this point in time I don't know whether I am going to finish the socks and try and get in touch with her to give them to her, uh, finish the socks and keep them, or rip them out and start something different with them. I have not decided on the best course of action so they're just kind of put on hold at the moment. This big bag is filled with a lot of scrap yarn and ends and leftovers from projects that did not belong to me. A lot of this yarn was gifted things that I don't real I didn't really know what to do with. My mom at one point in time, she has since forgotten. So <laughs> she doesn't remember that she asked for this, but she wanted a sparkly multicolored black scarf. I am working on a scarf for her that is black and sparkly. I'm probably going to try to make this at least double the width that it currently is. However, if I have leftover yarns, I will probably keep working on this until I run out of some of the yarns that I just don't know what else to do with them. If you can see, there's a lot of sparkly yarns in here. I don't really use a whole lot of sparkly things in my knitting for myself. It's usually reserved for my mother, who likes sparkles a lot. As you can see, it's very long. Um, I'm actually knitting this in one direction and leaving a lot of yarn to then cut and use as fringe. Another project I have mixed feelings about. This is the start of a mitten. The designer I think is Diana Walla. It is a Gryffindor themed mitten. Yeah, I really love the design. I like the patterns that the designer has produced. I like the colors still, but Harry Potter themed things can be very problematic due to the author's anti-trans and extremely transphobic stance and digging in her heels on the subject. This is another one of those instances where I am still learning how best to negotiate not wanting to be involved in a problematic genre, but also recognizing a lot of the personal ideas and characteristics that I have kind of built my identity on are very related to this subject, which is now kind of ruined for a lot of people, myself included. Again, I really like the design and I like the designer, so I might modify the design a bit for my own uses to kind of take away that association. Probably use different colors so that it's not obviously Gryffindor themed. Take out the lion or change it to be closer to just a lion that you would see in a coat of arms or something similar. Just kind of take that meaning out of it so that I can still use this design without any token support for the author. Using this pattern doesn't financially benefit her in any way, but it still feels kind of wrong even like creating those associations with a media produced by someone who has desperately hurt a lot of her readership. Another thing where I'm gonna have to figure out what to do about it. I, again, probably ripping this one out. I 
will likely use the yarn for a different purpose. And if I come back to this pattern amongst all of the other knitting that I am planning on doing before I think about this again, I might pick different colors to kind of just create my own meaning. Works in progress can be a very emotional topic because of the emotional connections that we feel to things and how those emotional connections change over time. That's just kind of the nature of the beast and it's part of the reason why I have so many. I have a lot of emotional connection to these things. Sometimes I haven't yet processed how those emotions have changed and working on the projects or taking them out can bring up some really heavy feelings. This is the start of the Burton Vestigan, and I got a decent way through, but I am not loving how the yarn is working up. The yarn is two DK weights held double, not a super bulky weight yarn. I'm just not liking just the fabric and how open it is, and it's not real squishy, it's very dense, it's very heavy. I had to put this project down the first time because I was so sick that I could not lift it. Being very heavy, being very dense, and having unpredictable health that might be impacted by that at some point again, here's hope not, but life is unpredictable. I think I'm going to have to just call it on this one and rip it out. I might come back to it with a different loftier yarn at some point in time, but as it stands, this fabric is not working, therefore I can't continue on the project. This is On the Beach, Isabel Kramer, I think. Mostly done sweater, but I'm pretty sure that I am going to run out of yarn before I get to the sleeves. And this is 100% alpaca, meaning it is very warm. If it's not a sleeved sweater used for winter, don't really have a use for it. Need to find another way to use the yarn or find more of the yarn to use in the sleeves. This is the Bricks sweater. I made it into a cropped sweater uh, at a point that fits me nicely. I ran out of this yarn for the sleeves. For this one, I am actually planning to dye some similar yarn in my stash to give it that kind of green color. It's a bit complicated. This is Barocco Peruvia, and it is a single ply spun with a lot of different colors of roving that have been carded together to create that multicolor look for an overall green effect. This is the Moon Shawl by Sylvia McFadden, another one of her designs. All this really needs is for the ends to be woven in and for it to be vigorously blocked. Uh, for a family friend, I was making dish towels for her with swear words because that's just that's just her personality and she's gonna love them. But I only have two of them done. I have two more that I'm going to make, but I need to weave in the ends and block them. So and this one is WTF. It's not real easy to see on screen, but the letters are just kind of done in garter stitch so that they kind of show up against the stockinette fabric, but not a lot. I think I've shown this one on the channel before. This is the Shapely Boyfriend cardigan. I added a shawl collar to it. It is entirely done except for blocking and buttons. There are no buttons to go with the buttonholes. Once that's done, this will be ready. It is an extremely warm sweater. I'm not going to have a use for it again until maybe October. This is just a cowl that I was making for my dad, striping two different colors of black, brown sheep, lamb's pride, worsted, and bulky. I'll get it done eventually. This is just kind of like I have this yarn, I don't know what to do with it. Dad is often going to go snowshoeing. I wish I could go. Can't, but at least I'll send him something to keep him warm. This is the Aunt Rorse sweater. I was making it for myself. Then my mom tried it on and decided it was hers. 
She's not getting another sweater after this. I need to finish the second sleeve and then block it and it'll be off to its new home. Speaking of this, another project that I started swatching for to use up the yarn remaining once I am done with this is a yellow scarf for a friend of mine to use up all the remaining yellow yarn. Since I don't really use this color much or wear it much, I think he'll like it, but I don't really have anything to show. I can only really just mention it. In case you didn't think I was weird enough, this is a wool tank top. It's not real easy to show on camera, but and it will stop rolling once I've blocked it, but this is a racerback tank top that I just kind of started making. I'm not super far along with it, but it's using a single ply hand spun yarn that a friend of mine from junior college spun. She, at the time, enjoyed spinning the yarn on a drop spindle. It was for a class that she and I met in fiber arts but she wasn't a knitter or a crocheter or a weaver or did anything with yarn. So she just gave it to me, which was very kind of. The last one that I'm going to show in this video is the Exploration Station by Stephen West. This one is in the middle of a row because of course it is. Here it is. I am using two colors of hedgehog fibers in their skinny singles and two colors of knitted wit in their single ply. The Italian plum and the royal, this bright blue right here, are knitted wit. Can't remember the gray right now. I think that the dark purple blue rust mix is hurricane. It's coming along. It's almost done. I just need to finish it. I think that this is the last section before it starts doing the chevron border at the bottom. All right, so likely I have more knitted works in progress, but at the moment I have not yet found them. This is the tally we are at. I will show more sewing and spinning and possibly weaving projects in the near future. I likely have quite a few other works in progress that I have to show, but a lot of them require some digging through my stuff and getting organized. It is very likely that before I can show you many other works in progress, I'll have a tidying video coming out. So you can tidy with me on that one. If you enjoy the videos I'm putting out, if you want to show your support and or sympathy for me getting through these works in progress and the emotional work that they are forcing me to do by digging them up, or if you just want to help someone get some glasses with blue light filtration so that I don't get headaches while editing videos. I have a link down in the description for my Ko-fi account. As I said, I will likely be coming out with a tidying video very soon. My clutter, as I said before, is not cute. I have a lot of stuff that I need to work through now that I have more tools at my disposal in order to work through them. It's a process. If you want to go on that journey with me, stay tuned. Don't know how to end this yet. Okay, bye! <laughs>